One key challenge that farmers face in Kenya is smart or stunt disease on their napier grass. Let us find out all about them and what to do. It's called the napier smart disease. And a farmer can identify by the black ends. It is causing a yield loss of up to 90%. Mm. So you can see within a very short time, the farmer will have no nipia in the farm. How is it spread? It can be spread by wind. If a farmer is using his jembe here, it can spread the spores to another area. Also the planting mm. materials. Mm. If it happens that a farmer comes and gets a planting material from here, Kalistan disease to his farm. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So how, how have you been dealing with smart in your shamba? Uh, I was just uprooting and throwing it away. So when the farmer uproots and they throw the material away, mm. the spores are carried away by the, by the wind and it spreads everywhere. When you uproot the affected material, you need to bury it under the soil mm -hmm. or you burn the mm -hmm. material completely. Then we need to bury it right away. Yeah, mm. we can show the farmer how to do it. I will help. Let, let's mm. do it. Let's, yeah, do it. So let's get rid of this. To stop smart disease spreading, dig a trench at least one foot or 30 centimeters deep. Uproot the infected plants, making sure you leave nothing behind and place in the trench. Cover completely with soil and leave the plants to rot down. And what you see before me here is actually what we call nippy head smart disease. It's a disease that can spread mechanically, meaning that the black substance you are seeing are the disease seeds. If they are blown by the wind or a bird or you with your gumboots, you can continue spreading. Like uh, the nip you can see ahead of us, it looks healthy, mm -hmm. but uh, it could be potentially diseased. It's a question of time and with dry weather, you start getting this expression. Now, the problem with this expression, if you look here, there are very few leaves compared to the one that has not yet shown the disease. True. What we know is that the nutrients the animal would want to benefit from are mostly in the leaves. Okay. So it means when the leaves get fewer, there is little benefit the animal can really get from this. Okay. Mm -hmm. What can our farmer do to get good napia? Once you notice your napia is flowering like this, you should make a deliberate effort to actually uproot this, dry it and burn, or even bury it deep. Because if you give napia, this napia to your animal, this disease-causing seed will still be in your manure. And if you continue using your manure in your napier farm, you actually continue propagating the problem. Right. Uproot, bury, or burn the affected plants. Then what? The other thing I encourage farmers, instead of just relying on napier alone, it's good to diversify, have more types of forages which you can grow. Because the chances are, even if a disease problem comes, they are not likely to be affected at the same time all of them. So, one way of dealing with napier smart or stunt is to plant disease-resistant varieties such as Bracaria or Panicum grasses. But what if your Bracaria is attacked by pests and diseases? So, Alfred, yes. mm. so what challenges do you face? One of the challenges is that uh, during the dry season, mm -hmm. it's turning yellow. About the, the turning of yellowish and then uh, brown, it's an issue of uh, some insects called the rendy spider mite mm. attacking during the dry season. And one way of the farmer can be able to identify the rendy spider mite, mm -hmm. you just need to check your field. Mm -hmm. uh, when you, you pluck the leaf, yes. which has been affected, mm -hmm. you can see this one is uh, a little bit yellowish. Mm -hmm. So you need to check on the lower side mm -hmm. very closely oh, okay. because the rendy spider mites are very tiny. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see uh, the yeah. small insects yes. which yeah. are moving. And they are yeah, moving. Yeah, oh yes. And now oh, these are true. the rendy spider mites. Are the spider mites dangerous? Is it okay if we leave them when the bracaria is brown? Yeah. Is it bad for the cows or it's just fine? So one of the problems is that the paratability, the way the cows like that grass, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now they, they don't like anymore. When you are forage are affected, mm -hmm. even the nutrition of value itself deteriorates. What are the solutions? Uh, one thing that uh, Alfred can do, if he can have irrigation once in a week, mm -hmm. because okay. the rainy spider mites are not comfortable with the watering. They don't like water. <laughs> they don't like water. Uh -huh. Make sure to water regularly and check your grasses for common pests such as spider mite. You may also use pesticides to get rid of the spider mite. Spider mites eat and grow on the green part of your grasses. If your grass is attacked by spider mite, harvest it immediately and feed it to your cows. Cut the grass 5 to 10 centimeters above the ground. Do this 
even if the grass is not fully grown yet, as it will help stop the spider mite spreading and result in less spider mites in your field. Remember to water regularly and always check your grasses for pests such as spider mite.